No. Even to this day, the commandments that the Lord gave our forefathers is the same commandments that we're supposed to keep today. And when we turn from these commandments, the Lord don't like it. And when you find yourself in a bind, the only thing you got to do is look at yourself and see what you did. Don't blame it on everybody else. Look and see what your part in all of this mess was. Go ahead on and read. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. So Solomon's sin caused the Lord to take the kingdom out of his hand and give it to his servant. Go ahead. Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Now look at this here. I'm not going to do it in your time, Solomon, but when your son succeeds you, I'm going to do it in his time because I'm going to save face for you for your father's sake. And I'm going to let y'all in on a big secret. The reason why we ain't totally destroyed is because of this man, Abraham. Because of the promise that the Lord made to Abraham that we are still the people of the Lord. And it's because of this man, Noah, that the Lord ain't destroyed the world again. Because he made a covenant with Noah, said, I ain't going to do this no more. That's why that rainbow came in the days of Noah. And because of the promise that he made to Abraham, that we are still the people of God today. So he told Solomon, because of David's sake, I'm not going to do this in your time. But when your son get this kingdom, he's going to catch hell. Because I'm going to take it in his time. Go ahead and read at uh, 13. verse four, 13. Howbeit, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Now, Solomon come out of the tribe of Judah. And the one tribe that he gave Solomon's son was Benjamin. The other ten tribes went to Ephraim, the Ephraimite. Now, Rehoboam was Solomon's son's name. Rehoboam, Solomon's son, was made king over Israel after Solomon's death. The nation was divided during his reign, and Jeroboam, the Ephraimite, was made king over Israel. Once the nation divided, Judah was in the southern part, and they went under the banner of Judah with Jerusalem as their capital. The other ten tribes kept the national name of Israel, and they made Samaria their capital. So Jeroboam, he was an Ephraimite. He was made king over Israel, which was the ten tribes. And Rehoboam was king over Judah, which consisted of Judah and Benjamin. Later, the tribe of Levi left Jeroboam in Israel and joined Judah and Benjamin. Now, Judah had 18 kings to reign over them after the division of the nation. And Israel had 19 kings to reign over them. And history in the Bible will tell you all of the kings of Israel was wicked. Every last one of them. Out of the 18 kings that ruled over Judah, you had some good and you had some bad. But of the 19 kings that ruled over Israel, all of them was wicked. To the point that in the year 1722 B.C., the Lord caused the Assyrians to remove Israel which at this time consisted of nine tribes into captivity, and they were never to return. Thus you come up with the adage, the lost tribes of Israel, because these people went into captivity and they were assimilated into the lands that they went captive to. 135 years later, in the year 587 B.C., Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem which consisted of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and he destroyed the temple of the Lord. So we started on our downfall then. 